what you need to know about the PPDA exposition 2022 that is coming up. Of course, PPDA is a public uh, procurement and disposal of public assets, and it's going to be having an exposition for its stakeholders, businesses, and the public at large. And here to tell us more about it is Mr. Agava Moses, who is the CEO of FIPRO Uganda. Good morning to you, Mr. Agava. Morning, Priscilla. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure. Good morning, our listeners. So tell us more about uh, FIPRO Uganda. I know that you are the ones organizing the PPD exposition. Yes. FIPRO Uganda started in uh, 2009. It is a, a printing, publishing, and branding company. And um, recently we branched to e into events. Mm -hmm. And uh, we looked at it as a way of adding value to our economy. Not only just employing people, we are looking at also, you know, um, adding to our GDP. Mm. And when we approached uh, PPDA for to partner with it in regards to the expo, it was a good opportunity where they saw that um, it is an opportunity to add value to the 35,000 registered members of PPDA. Oh. Mm. Okay. All right. So what is the goal of the exposition? Because I know that uh, at the end of the day, uh, government is moving towards electronic systems and uh, people need to actually be in know of these electronic systems. So what is the entire mission, goal, and expectations of the exposition? The goal of the PPDA uh, Business Expo is to, to educate, learn, and uh, impart skills in the, in the, in the people who own businesses in mm -hmm. Uganda. One of the things that um, are happening in the world is innovation. Innovation is key for you to do business. And uh, by PPDA coming up with the electronic uh, government portal, mm -hmm. it is an opportunity for businesses to be able to, to reduce interface or create more transparency in doing business with the government of Uganda. The electronic government portal, uh, you register on it, and then when there is business for, for you, they send an email to you, and then you are able to respond to it, and then they, t they will tell you who has won the business based on the cheapest uh, price that is given. But many Ugandans are not yet on the go electronic government portal. And that's one of the reasons why we, we said that we need to do the PPDA Business Expo, and then we have run a training on EGP for people to learn. Number two, this is an opportunity for businesses to network. The Expo is bringing together public and uh, private um, companies or organizations. P public sector is coming with its uh, members, the heads of procurement, the key decision makers, mm -hmm. the commissioners, the undersecretaries, the, P the PSCs and the ministers. Why is government doing this? It is an opportunity to be able to learn how do I do business with government of Uganda? And that's where most people must come to the Expo. Why, that's why most businesses must come to the Expo, so that they are able to connect with these, with these key decision makers. Number two, PPD it, it, uh, alone has over 35,000 certified businesses. This is an opportunity for people to come and network with these businesses. These businesses also do other businesses. So the best way we can do to build our economy is to work together, network, add value to each other, and then our, our economy will go forward. Okay, all right. You have mentioned educating and impacting skills, and so the expectation is that you will be having skills development sessions. Under which categories are you going to be focusing this exposition on? Yes, we have various uh, skills um, uh, sessions which are very key. It is not the mandate of PPDA to, to train people, mm -hmm. but PPDA looked at it as a way of giving back to its members. And they thought, let's do uh, skills development sessions, which uh, our members could learn from. We have skills sessions, like how do you start and run a family business based on agriculture? Because you very well know that 80% of our economy relies on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And number two, 45% um, of local content in the 2016 Act of PPDA promotes local content. And PPDA looked at it in a way of adding value to um, the local companies by teaching them how do you start and run a business professionally. Because uh, many of our businesses fail before the first, wo first one year. Okay. But this is an opportunity for people to learn. We have skills sessions in uh, EGP, Electronic Learn uh, Government Portal. How do you register? Registration will be for free. People need to come on board and they are able to register. And at the same time also get certificate that they are certified to do business with the government of Uganda. Number three, there's also a skill session for investment opportunities. You have had scenarios where people have asked you, but I have one million or two million, what can I do? Mm. Please come at the expo. 
all those ideas, we have a variety of ideas, which the session will be led by Uganda Investment Authority. The ideas of SMEs, the ideas of SM, MSMEs, mm -hmm. the ideas of corporate companies. There are so many ideas. There are so many opportunities. You also very well know that we have opportunities in the oil and gas sector. The oil and gas sector, everybody is look, thinks that it's about drilling, mm -hmm. but it has so many opportunities. We are bringing on board UNOC, mm -hmm. we are bringing on board Petroleum Authority to be able to explain to people at what level can you enter engage. into mm -hmm. or engage in the oil sector. This is an opportunity for you. Come at the expo, all this will be there. Another session we have is branding and marketing. You very well know that branding and marketing is important in terms of building a business. If you don't brand your well, brand yourself very well. If you don't position yourself very well, you cannot really, you know, execute business at a higher level. The, another session we have is about available financing facilities. We are looking at UDB. We are looking at different banks to come on board to be able to explain to people when you have an LPO of uh, a big magnitude and they don't have the money, what can you do? There are facilities for LPO discounting. Mm -hmm. We have uh, that's under that session. We also have bid guarantees for you to be able to get a bid guarantee. What do you need to do? What are the procedures to to get a bid guarantee from the bank? If it is performance security, what do you do to be able to acquire a performance mm -hmm. security? Lastly, but not least, we are also looking at the aspect of training people. How do I do business with the government of Uganda? That's called bid support. What are the procedures? How do I get a, a trading license? Mm -hmm. How do I get income tax clearance? How do I get a um, uh, certificate from PPD? How do I get uh, how, how do I get my company registered as RSB if I'm not yet registered? At the same time, we'll have a one-stop center which will give big registering businesses, helping them. How, if you want to do business with the government of Uganda, you do ABCD, we have URSB, we have URA, we have KCCA, we have um, uh, Uganda Investment Authority, we have NIDA at the stop one stop center. And then at the same time, we are also going to have a session on tax planning and management. Many of the businesses go through these challenges. Everybody knows. But it's out of limited knowledge that we have. URA is a must, it must collect tax. But we need to learn how do we work with it to be able to work together to develop our businesses. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Mr. Agawa, that sounds a handful of sessions that could stretch up to a month. How long is this expo? The expo is happening from July 8th, 9th, and 10th. 2022 at Kololo Independence Grounds. And from what time? For, uh, we are starting already at 9 a.m. and up to 2 p.m. Okay. We have performances by Sheba and Spice Diana in the evenings okay. because we must do business and have fun at the same time. Business and leisure thereafter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, we want to find out, I know that government you know, deals in purchase of goods, uh, services, works, and supplies. And so currently, what's the government's expenditure when it comes to public procurement? Government spends over 60% of its uh, budget to buy uh, goods and services, goods, services, uh, and works. Uh, government is the biggest client mm -hmm. uh, in courts um, in terms of the, our economy mm -hmm. because it spends more money than uh, the private sector. And this is an opportunity for everybody to come and learn. We have the un unveiling of the annual procurement plan. PPDA is going to unveil. The plan is there. What is government going to, to, to unveil? Are they going to put money in ads to buy House of Akedo or Macadamia? Are they going to, which roads are they going to work on? Which uh, supplies are they going to put money in? Which services are going to invest money in? All those things are going to be unveiled on that day. This is an opportunity for every business person to come on board and be able to understand where do I need to put money? Which organization should I target? Where has government put lots of money for you to be able to do business with the government of Uganda? This is an opportunity for you to engage with both international companies and local companies to be able to network and learn one or two things for your business to grow. Okay, all right. But according to the public, there's a query out there uh, for people who have previously or even currently are in bed with government and business. Mm. Uh, they have had issues in terms of remuneration of their works, their supplies, their services, and uh, their goods. And uh, that has you know, cause people to sort of not want to continue being in bed with government simply because of they delay to pay 
it may take financial years for them to actually get their money back and yet in regards to what you have mentioned they have gotten discounts on beads uh, they've gotten loans from UDP or any other uh, facility financial facility and that has caused their businesses to lag behind because they were working as per a time frame something that government doesn't seem to respect well, uh, that is a question for government, and unfortunately I don't work for government, but mm -hmm. I'll give you a scenario for the past experience I've uh, maybe uh, gone through because I've been doing business with the government of Uganda for over 10 years. The aspect of government not paying on time, it is true. But what we must all learn is that uh, life evolves, the economy evolves, government also delays to pay based on the procedures you went through. That's why PPDA is bringing EGP on board. Because you cannot procure something when you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So by the time government procures something, as a businessman, it, I should be uh, knowing that this organization has the money and they're going to pay me on time. Yes, there should be a guarantee. Yes. Because it doesn't make sense for me. We have lost our properties by government, you know, uh, mm -hmm. giving us LPOs and they doesn't pay on time. Even up to date, some people who haven't paid on time. But this, the, this is about people coming to learn at the expo. They should come and learn. How do I do business with the government of Uganda so that I, do, I don't lose money? Because I don't think government benefits anything for its people to lose money. It doesn't benefit anything. It is about us understanding the procedures. Have they given me an LPO before they procure? What kind of LPO are they giving me? Is it a manual LPO or is it an electronic LPO? That's why AGP, EGP is very key. Electronic government portal, you bid, you get a, you get a contract, then they issue a, a, an, ex, a, an electronic LPO because an electronic LPO captures the money. Mm -hmm. For you, by the time you supply and finish, your money is there and you're given your money. So it is a question of continuous discussion. But at the same time, on the part of government, I would urge government to uh, endeavor to make sure that at least uh, it pays uh, suppliers' money on time. Because uh, every other time we get challenges as businessmen, we, there are jobs that government loses. You find ourselves we are in issues, mm -hmm. and we can't even pay tax on, on time. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, we find ourselves that uh, we are losing jobs. One of the and things that is are they key, giving you any incentives to actually thank you very much. in so that kind of It's very important for government to look at business people as uh, heroes. Because every job that a businessman creates, no matter the level, even if you have a maid at home, mm -hmm. you're employing somebody, that is something that is very key for our nation. It's very important because 90%, according to the UN, 90% of businesses are SMEs. And most of the jobs that are created are through SMEs. And that's where we need to look at SMEs as heroes. Add value to them. Help them grow because it is a continuous growth, because it is a continuous struggle. Doing business is not easy. But at the same time, it is the best thing to happen to a nation. That's why you see developed countries, their economies are very valuable. Equally the same, I believe that the way government has worked hard to make sure that we have peace, mm -hmm. to make sure that there are policies to promote our businesses, they should go an extra mile and say, okay, fine, if Moses has a business, what are we able to do with Moses so that he grows? Because he's employing Ugandans. I'm not employing foreigners. I'm employing Ugandans. And the man I make stays in the economy. Mm -hmm. So that's where we need to work as partners. We need to engage and look for solutions. When you, I will take an example of UK. UK has an SME authority. If you don't pay, like in five or ten days, you are penalized. Mm. Because by the time you procure from a businessman, the money should be there. So if you procure from me and I'm able to deliver on time, then it means that you pay me on time so that I'm able to do other people's jobs. Because we don't have big capital. SMEs have less capital. Yeah. But it is a continuous discussion and engagement for us to grow. Okay, all right. So the uh, electronic government portal that you speak of, mm -hmm. what is it going to service? How is it going to actually service the PPDA? Okay, fine. The electronic government portal is uh, it was rolled about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And every business that is going to do uh, business with the government of Uganda is going to, has to be registered. You cannot do business with the government of Uganda when you are not registered on the electronic government portal. So what happens when you are registered? They send you a bid. Mm -hmm. with others whom you don't know. And then you send back, there's no interface. Literally, it is increasing more transparency. 
and also it is increasing efficiency of procurement. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of it all, it adds value to companies. You don't waste time in paper, you don't do what. You just do everything online, and then you receive your, your bid notification that either you have gone through or you have lost, and they tell you the reasons. And then if you have gone through, you go ahead and work. There is the issue and help you, and you go ahead and do business. Okay. Mm. All right. So as uh, you are going to be, uh, you know, exposing this to the people and uh, conducting sessions about the electronic government portal. I think one of the other things that you did mention with the EGP is in terms of payment. So how is it going to work? Is it an automated system that as and when procurement is made, you're issued an LP and then the transaction, the monetary transaction of that, what's the implication of us going with this uh, EGP? The electronic government's uh, portal helps uh, um, efficiency in terms of procurement. Mm -hmm all through until the procurement is done. By the time you procure, they procure, they require, they send you a bid, you put in the quotation, and then after putting in the quotation, you are able to get an LPO, and then after getting the LPO, then you deliver, then after they deliver it, then they are able to also do what? Pay. It captures the payments before even you do what? Before even you, you supply, because okay. the monies are there. Mm -hmm. And it is um, intended to make sure that procurement is efficient and effective okay. for both the supplier and also for the user. Okay, so back to the PPDA business expo that you're mm -hmm. having, at what cost is it coming? The PPD Expo is uh, entrance fee will be 5,000 shillings. And uh, the reason we are putting uh, 5,000 shillings is uh, because of the costs that are involved in organizing the expo. Then number two, we are also looking at uh, uh, having serious people do business. Because when you put an expo and you, um, you make it for free, you'll find that everyone, everyone comes on board and those who are just, you know, coming in just to pass time, which is not right. Because this is a business um, um, a platform, buying and selling. Exhibitors expect to meet potential clients at the expo mm -hmm. because they would have paid fees to be at the expo. So we need to have engagement to be able to um, make the expo uh, successful. Okay. Yeah. Who's eligible for exhibition? Um, all companies, government has different sectors. All sectors in terms of services, supplies, and works. Everybody that is registered under those sectors, we are having subsectors like finance and, uh, and uh, insurance. We are having subsectors like um, uh, media. Mm -hmm. We are having subsectors like uh, construction. We are having subsectors like medical, medical health, that is health, medical equipment, laboratories, and blah, blah, blah. We are having subsectors like agriculture. Agriculture, we are giving it big stores. We are having sectors like the government entities. They are all called upon to come and exhibit. We have many sectors. As, as long as you are supplying government, as long as you are a government entity, please come on board and exhibit. As long as you are an individual, as long as you are interested in learning, as long as you are interested in making money or learning how to make money or looking for ideas or networking, you are invited for the expo, come on board. It is an experience to build an economy. Okay. It is an experience to add value to an economy. So if someone wants to exhibit, how do they get to do that? Um, that one is done. We have numbers. Number one, we have uh, a website, www.ppdabusinessexpo.ug. We have um, contacts that we are using. Mm -hmm. um, we have the email. The email is uh, info at ppdabusinessexpo.ug. Dot UG. We have contacts 0704-627-696. We have uh, 0772-479-365. Those are our contacts. I repeat again. 0704-627-696. 0772-479-365. Okay, all right. So to the exhibitor, please take over that opportunity and go into an environment, a business environment where you can actually network. But then again, who do you expect to walk through those doors uh, to come for those three days of the exhibition? We are expecting uh, uh, various, um, um, uh, uh, both individuals and companies. Mm -hmm. Number one, we are looking at key decision makers. This is an expo of doing business, and government is committed to support uh, businesses to grow, mm -hmm. where they're having challenges to be able to discuss and be able to engage. We are having uh, key decision makers, like heads of procurement, we are having over like 100 heads of procurement at the expo to be coming through their, 
the, through the organization, the Institute of Procurement Professionals. If they are coming on board to be able to engage with suppliers, to be able to uh, address all the challenges they have. We are having um, PPDA itself with its team. We are having key government entities on board. We are having business community. We are having uh, individuals who want to learn and add value to the economy too. We are having companies that are already doing business with the government of Uganda. We are having, this is an expo for most of the people who are interested in doing business so that they are able to learn and also add value or add on what they are already doing. Okay, all right. And what opportunities are actually awaiting suppliers at this expo? The opportunities awaiting suppliers, number one, um, there are the opportunities that will be able to sell at factory prices. There are opportunities that you'll be able to find new innovations at the expo. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities that you are able to network and do businesses. You may not be doing business with the government of Uganda. You may not be able to, uh, to have the, 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 prerequisites, the prerequisites that are needed for one to do business with the government of Uganda. They are in private companies. Over 35,000 certified companies are doing business with the government of Uganda. We already have over 200 exhibitors insurance companies, banks, uh, agriculture companies, so many of them, they are on board and they want to offer opportunities. Businesses after the pandemic, this is the time where we are coming to make money. This is the time we are looking at opportunities to recover. We must push through our economy forward. We must add value to our economy. There's no one who's going to change our economy. It is about us. Come for the expo. There are a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of learning. There's a lot of uh, engagement that is going to add value to our businesses. Okay, mm. so the supplier has a lot of benefits yes. <laughs> before yes. them. The general mm. public, the what are they to benefit? The general public, we are calling uh, them upon. One of the concepts that um, are very limited in Africa, mm. we don't usually support our own businesses. And that's the challenge. When you go to developed countries, it is important that um, if Moses is doing business, mm -hmm. come on board and uh, support Moses. I have my own friends. If I post, let's say, on WhatsApp, and I've posted um, uh, about the expo, mm. get the what I've posted, post it for me, and I get clients. So we need to inculcate a culture whereby we need to support each other in terms of growing our businesses. There's no reason for you to go and spend money uh, in Kenya or in Tanzania when we can do business together and we develop our economy. Although those markets also are very important to us. But the first step for us to do business is we need to support each other as brothers and sisters because this is our nation. We can have different ideologies, whether political, whether what, but the reality of the matter is we need our country to move forward. We cannot move the country forward without business. Okay. All right. So that's <coughs> a good one. You can't move the country forward without business. So finally, uh, is payment on the D-Day? And then is p are people paying the 5000 every single day or it's a one-time payment? The, f the, the payments for exhibitors, um, we are engaging them. They can call the numbers. They can, call the, they can send the emails. They can go on our website and they do the booking. That is for the stalls. But for people who are coming for entrance, for the, for as individuals, uh, entrance fee is 5000 and it is for one day. And the training sessions are um, three days. Every day we have two training sessions. And those are six training sessions in different fields, like I told you. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, if you pay today, tomorrow will come for another session. But the training sessions are for free. Mm -hmm. We are not charging anything. So when you pay your 5,000 uh, shillings, it is enough for you to enter the expo, be, by to be able to network, be able to also learn, and at the same time, be able to engage, to engage other, um, other business people at the expo. Okay, so is it cash upon entrance? Cash upon entrance. Aha, uh -huh, Mr. Gaba, we're talking about electronic government portal. How do we not, imp you know, improvise and use electronics the challenge to actually do the <coughs> expo? The challenge for Uganda is one: you, we always want things to be quick. No, life is about evolving. Now we are evolving towards procurement, and at the same time, as we grow, our plan next year is that we should be able to pay on mobile money platforms. We have them. We have e-ticketing yes. platforms. Yes, we have e-ticketing platforms, mm -hmm. and we have mobile money. But remember, at the same time, we are targeting somebody also 
who is an yeah, an and we want an to an attract an them yes. to understand and appreciate that electronic is the way forward. This for is business. a continuous is a continuous um, process that we must educate people. Mm -hmm. Yes, we could be having you know, uh, e ticketing. We could be having mobile phone numbers. Yes, we have them. But the reality of the matter is, we want to continuously educate our people. And I can tell you, the next expo, you not enter without e ticket. Mr. Gaba, I will hold you accountable to that because now it is raising <laughs> issues <laughs> of transparency and efficiency. Yes. Yes. If we had gone with e ticketing, one mm -hmm. of the things you have sorted out at the entrance is the commotion that happens True. payment, receipt, and then name, registration. Mm -hmm. Whereas with e ticketing, you already have the registration and the payment. So the person just goes, passes, you know, just slides over the e ticket and they enter. I anyway, that's exactly. I truly <laughs> yes, agree with you, but it's continuous, you know, educating yeah. our people so that we get there. Okay. Yes. All right. In your closing remarks. Uh, In our closing remarks, I, uh, number one. I'd like to call upon exhibitors. We still have space mm -hmm. at, the, uh, the, at um, the exhibition. We need more and more exhibitors so that we are able to add value to economy. I would like to call all Ugandans. Do you want to learn about business? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to add value to a business? Come and learn. This is an expo of adding value to a country. This is an expo. It's not politics, it's not politics as usual. It is a, a something that adds value to a country. It is something that is going to add value to your skills. Come and learn and be able to add value. Uh, the next, um, uh, another one is I would like to thank all the exhibitors that have already booked. I would like to thank our sponsors, National Media Group. Thank you very much with your sister companies, NTV, Dembe, FM, KFM. We appreciate what you have done for us. PSFU, I'd like to, th to thank uh, Private Sector Foundation who came on board to be able to add value to what we are doing. I'd like to thank, to thank Isuzu. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Modern Group, uh, which does tires and aluminum. I'd like to thank um, um, other media houses that are on board okay. to be able to also uh, support us. I'd like also to thank Mount Meru, which is on board all to right. be able also to support us. And all other stakeholders and everybody. I call upon everybody to come for the expo. This is a different expo, one for business, one for fun, and one for learning. All right, thank you so much, Moses Gaba, Free Paul Uganda CEO, but also the organizers for the PPD Air Business Expo 2022. For more details, just go over to the website www.ppda.ug for those details. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, they're looking to educate and impact skills in the different sectors he mentioned, and also to introduce those that have not yet been introduced to what is known as the